What about some strategies for rapid treatment? Let's go to Ron right now. Could you share more about pulsed xenon intense room disinfection and is this technology safe? Let's, let's uh, look at the technology and then go into the safety. Um, first, let's, um, I'm gonna paint a picture real quick. Janine just went through 222. And think of uh, 222 as a light mist, a light rain. People don't mind being out in it, that type of thing. You might have a little umbrella and so on. Then we compare pulse xenon into that. Pulse xenon is like a huge lightning storm, lots of energy, that type of thing, flashes going off, so on with it. And because it can deliver a tremendous amount of energy very rapidly. So in a very short period of time. And how does it do that? It does that by the electronics inside of that charge and then discharge into the lamp approximately every six to seven seconds. And so this lamp, the pulse xenon lamp itself is, it's a giant flash bulb, okay? Flash cube that people would have. And that is going off every six to seven seconds with it, delivering all of that energy, okay, into those pathogens uh, across a pretty, um, pretty big spectrum. The, the fun part of this is the designing with it of using a pulled xenon, say, versus Janine mentioned uh, 254, conventional germicidal lamps, that type of thing, is the package is much smaller. So it starts to fit into our overall architecture that much better being that it is so much smaller. It's not, uh, it's not disrupting that overall architecture. And, and so it allows us to put it into spaces, not interrupt the architecture with it and have very, very rapid, very rapid disinfection. So think of where would you start to use that? Janine walked through a lot of different design areas. We would have, uh, you could have a classroom now, many things are done at night. You, let's turn on disinfection overnight, which is great. So with Pulse Xenon, you can have it programmed. It can turn on for just 30 minutes in that 24 hour period and do a fabulous job with it. But you can also have that turn on. I'm gonna go back to that classroom for a second and say that the classroom was out for their recess break or for their lunch break. You could also activate that as long as there's nobody in the space, because this is a, a big change between the 222 and the Pulse Xenon, is that it's meant for non-occupied spaces. So you have that that it's not occupied, turn it on and you can get that really rapid, give it 10 minutes, that type of stuff, and you can continue that um, pathogen reduction throughout the day as long as no one is in the space with it. Makes sense. So, Ron, what's meant by the broadband of UV as produced by a pulse xenon lamp? Sure. Um, broad spectrum. So we talked about the UVC, UVA, UVB, etc. This goes across all of those. So from 200 nanometers up almost to 1,000 nanometers, which is well into the visible range. Visible range starts at around 400 nanometers. It basically is putting out that full broad spectrum. There's a couple important parts though, is that 200 to around 230, it is, has a very strong band in it. And then it takes a dip down and then it starts to climb back out. So a little bit of a fun fact there is when you go into those really short waves, we talked about those as called those far UVC, the pathogens are highly susceptible. What that means is you don't have to have a lot of energy to get inactivation. So what the pulse xenon can do for that is because it delivers a tremendous amount of energy in a very short period of time, we can have great uh, inactivation very, very quickly. And this, as you mentioned, is a strategy for a non-occupied space. But Ron, what type of control strategies exist in case someone happens to maybe walk into a space while the cycle is in process? Absolutely. So with that, um, ox sensors are the most common. So an ox sensor basically is going to be somebody opens a door or makes a movement or whatever else, that ox sensor is gonna pick up and sense that there's movement and shut down the system. So what you really wanna have is to have um, the space cleared first, but should somebody accidentally open the door or whatever else, that's how the systems are going to control themselves. And there's a lot of other things to, that can be added to that to make the overall system safe in the overall operation. Janine talked about 
how to start designing the space. What do you want to, you know, what's the space going to be used for? How is it going to be used, et cetera, et cetera. These are types of things that go into uh, how you want to control and put the safety portions in place for the pulp scene on.